Hello, and welcome to UX, and this is if you haven't smiled yet today, by the channel Casual Geographic. Yeah, I think this title what it means is if you haven't smiled yet today, you're not gonna knowing Casual Geographic. But I don't know. This could be an uplifting video. Who knows? Yeah, Casual Geographic is a great video. Who basically, I guess, some people send him clips or he finds clips. I don't know. But he just talks about certain animal videos in there and gives animal facts in a great uh, joke way somewhere here and there, which is always perfect. But it's always just like you know, fast one after another fact, which is you know, his 10 minute video could be like a 30 minute video for somebody else. He's really fast in that way. So this is 17 minute video. So there's going to be lots of facts here. So let's watch it. Nah, this isn't clickbait. You're actually getting a wholesome video this time. Normally, I would just traumatize it for eight to ten minutes, <laughs> however long I need for mid rolls. Which, to be fair, isn't that hard to do because nature's a bit. Oh, the video cut off. That was weird. But I was gonna say nature's a brutal reality show where life is all about trying to get renewed to the next season. But in honor of the calendar turning to 2022, here's 22 animal facts to remind you that it ain't all that bad. Few animals have a worse PR team than hyenas. Mostly thanks to Lion King, hyenas got stuck with the label of dead-eyed drooling scavengers that only survive by licking off a lion's plate. Basically, we got a lot wrong about them. But something you probably didn't know is that hyenas form legitimate friendships with each other. And because they live in a hierarchy, low-ranking hyenas are more likely to seek relationships with higher-ranking females. Yeah, basically they're social climbers. Not only that, but hyenas will even go out of their way to bond with the friends of their friends. This type of networking is known as triad closure. And it doesn't surprise me knowing how much uh, hyenas care about their babies compared to most animals, right? So yeah, it makes sense. It's one way for a hyena stuck at the bottom rung of the social ladder to move on up without having to fight. Biologists observed a female named Waffles that went from the lowest tier member of the clan to the very top. Not by running fades, but by befriending the right hyenas until she managed to ride the cloud elevator all the way to the top floor. Waffles went from bottom of the cast to alpha female and didn't have to choose violence once. And Waffles' behavior wasn't just a coincidence. In cooperative problem solving tests, a pair of spotted hyenas actually outperformed chimpanzees. And in these tests, the more seasoned hyenas would go out of their way to help the less experienced complete their tasks. And they were able to do this without being trained. So yeah, not only are hyenas smarter than you think, they have a social circle just like us. And kind of like some sharks. Not all sharks. <laughs> Seriously though, holy shit. I mean, uh, they, they use basically, let's just say diplomacy rather than alpha male bullshit. So I guess hyenas have same brain power as our diplomats, apparently. <laughs> the hyenas could, in the future, I guess, through evolution, hyenas could uh, be, uh, you know, evolve into, or someone, you know, some hyena could basically break out and could be like a human type creature. Who the fuck knows? Right? Everybody, every time people think about which animals in the future is going to be like smart, like humans, this and that. Hyena could be one if they outperform chimpanzees. Sharks are mindless anti-social eating machines. A four-year study done at the Palmyra Atoll in the Pacific Ocean found that gray reef sharks will actually link up with the same group of sharks year after year. And even though they'll go out into the open ocean at night for food, they'll spend their day hanging out on the reef with the same group. Scientists believe these sharks will not only recognize specific individuals, but will actively choose to hang out with them. And many of these reef sharks maintain the same social circle for the entire four-year study. But according to them, these technically aren't friendships. It's more accurate to describe them as associates, or like convenience friends. You know, like the kind that would make no sense anywhere else except the place you work. And since I'm just going to commit to the work analogy, if going out for food is a shift, then these sharks meeting up on the reef is their version of chilling in the break room. Some fish are just way <laughs> smarter than you think. But the smartest fish of them all is the manta ray. Which makes sense because they have by far the biggest brain of any fish. Just for reference, the whale shark is the biggest fish in the sea, yet the manta ray's brain can be up to 10 times larger. The undersea Einstein has the mental capacity for problem solving, learning, and communication. But by far the most impressive thing is they can pass a test that most animals on a planet fail. The mirror test is the ultimate show of self-recognition and intelligence. All an animal needs to do to pass is recognize their own reflection. And when a manta ray swam up to the plate, they seemingly aced it. Captive manta rays reacted by blowing bubbles at their mirror cells and flipping over to look at their own underside. And we know they were checking themselves out because manta rays will often flash their white colorings whenever they meet a new manta. When looking at the manta in the mirror, they didn't do any of that. Meaning this party sized Pacific pancake actually recognized itself in the mirror. Which also means an underwater place map passed the test that most dogs, cats, and humans younger than- But the, I, uh, I mean, there are so many layers to recognizing that that's a mirror and that's you. I mean, that's some type of intelligence which is ridiculous, right? You need to recognize that's, a, that's some kind of a thing that somehow is showing who, who you are, right? Reflecting back. I mean, that's the level of thought that is really complex. Holy shit. I mean, it's just astonishing to think like one day we might discover that, you know, certain 
smart animals of the planet are even more smarter than we thought. This is ridiculous. How uh, how they, how can it just like oh look at that that's me I mean that's some some next level shit man. Obviously most animals see the mirror and like okay mm, that who is that. Because how are they going to process all that? Like, oh, that's a that's a thing called mirror. It's a material that can basically you can re, you can see your own reflection. That's some you know advanced thought there. Then eighteen months couldn't. Pigs are another animal that were smart enough to conquer the mirror test. <laughs> but it's not surprising since pigs are considered the fourth smartest animal in the world behind great apes, cetaceans like dolphins and elephants. Pigs are smart enough to recognize and respond to their own names when they're only two weeks old. On average, they can learn tricks much faster than dogs. Newborn piglets quickly learn to tell their mother's voice apart from all the others and will come running whenever she calls. Also, mother pigs will often sing to their hungry litter of Oh god, and people eat pigs, right? What are they called? Pork or whatever? I don't even know what's called, right? People like like chicken, people actively eat pig. If it's fourth smartest animal, how, how can you justify that? Holy shit. Porkies. That doesn't really have to do with intelligence, I just wanted to include it. But if you want the ultimate proof of pig perception, in 2016, Lulu the potbelly pig saved her owner from a near-fatal heart attack by running out into the road and playing dead, only getting up to lead the good Samaritan that had checked on her to her fallen owner. In 2014, a pet pig named Lucky saved his family from becoming an ashtray after waking up the entire house with frantic squealing at 4 in the morning. Because of the swine savior, the family just barely made it out of the house which had just gone up in flames. So yeah, adopt a pig and might just end up saving your life. Damn. You could say the same for your pet cat. Plenty of studies prove that owning a furry roommate can actually be good for your health. Just holding one can increase serotonin while also lowering cortisol levels and blood pressure. Having a long-term cat friend can also lower the risk of heart disease and studies show that it can reduce the- Man, it's just like, oh, isn't that cute? And he just, he just, oh, that's cute. That, that act, you know, triggers a response, I guess. Risk of health issues like a stroke by around 30%. And it turns out cats purr at a frequency believed to have borderline therapeutic healing effects on human bones, muscles, and tendons. On top of all that, some surveys show that just owning one can make you more attractive. In a poll, it was discovered that nearly 90% of single women subconsciously viewed men with cats as more caring and nurturing. You know how they say you gotta spend money to make money? I'm not gonna make the joke, but you can probably put it together. But none of these are the actual facts for this part. Because cats do so much for us without even realizing it, the least you can do is tell them you love them. And you can. By blinking. Slow blinking has been proven to evoke positive and happy emotions in a cat. If it responds with a blink back, then you know the feeling's mutual. And if it's a new cat, the slow blink makes the cat more likely to approach an unfamiliar person without malicious intent. Basically, a blink can make a cat go from grr to purr in a second. But unlike pet cats, tigers can't purr because they're literally not built that way. Instead, tigers <laughs> will make this sound known as a chuff, which they typically use to greet each other or express comfort. It's pretty much their happy sound. And just like house cats, tigers will also use a slow blink to show affection and they'll even roll over and expose their belly. And since their underside is their most vulnerable spot, this is the ultimate sign of trust. Oh, look at that, tigers are... <laughs> tigers are better than human, they don't know how to do macho shit, right? I'm tiger, I'm literally one of the most, most muscular animal there is, right? Oh, but look at that, I'm gonna, you know, roll around like a cat. They're, they, they, they are perfectly fine with their muscula masculinity there, unlike most humans. <laughs> Another fact is that tigers can be selfless, when they want to be. Now to be fair, male tigers typically get the females pregnant and then just go about their business like a tiger Tristan Thompson. But if a male tiger meets a female he's mated with, not only will they share a kill, but the male will let the female and what you have to assume are his cubs eat first. Once the female and her cubs get their fill, only then will the male take his share. Literally the polar opposite of lion society. But cubs can't get too comfortable, cause like lions, male tigers typically turn any cubs they come across into past tense. But what would happen if someone did the same to his mate? Rhetorical question, we know the answer, it doesn't end well. Cause one man allegedly messed around and found out. Once near a village in Sitha Thodu in India, a man shot down a full grown tigress. The poacher, named Baby, came across her while part of a group of people illegally brewing alcohol in the forest and the encounter cost her her life. But some bad deeds do not go unpunished. Because three days later, Baby was confronted by a male tiger believed to be the mate of the female he had slaughtered and the widower proceeded to put the baby to bed as the rightfully pissed off male tiger brutally mauled the poacher. Baby survived the initial attack, but the injuries gave him an expiration date of only a few days later. But the tiger didn't stop there, the male allegedly mauled any human he came across, and I can't say I blame him. For a usually solitary predator, tigers can be loyal. Do you want to know what else is? I can give you a hundred guesses and you still probably won't come up with the animal next. And that's cause not a lot of animals are more loyal than the golden jackal. They're one of the few okay. mammals that are monogamous. 
And unlike half of all humans, when they say till death do them part, they actually mean it. Gold. Yeah, t first of all, the tiger thing. Tiger being more loyal and, you know, somehow basically opposite of lion. But people think lion is more prideful. It's Disney, isn't it? Disney fucked that view up. Otherwise, people really peel up and see how fucked up lions are in the end compared to tigers and shit. Like, okay. And people always say tigers are evil. That's, oh, that's all Disney shit right there. Golden Jackal couple spend most of their lives together, which also makes the male jackal one of the best fathers in the entire animal kingdom. The father jackal is so important to the family that if something ever happened to him, there's a good chance his cubs wouldn't survive to the next season. And that's because when a mother and father hunt together, their success rate is three times higher than if they would have went at it alone. When the female jackal is ready to give birth, her partner will dig protective burrows for the pups and he'll defend them all with his life. And if there's a shortage of food, the father jackal will vomit whatever is left in his stomach to feed his children. Yeah, it may be gross. But it's the only thing keeping that face alive. But lucky for them, they got parents that work well together. Or at least better than 50% of marriages. Coyotes are the jackals of America, but instead of working well with other coyotes, some have started teaming up with their worst enemy. Normally, coyotes and badgers hate each other with extreme prejudice. But together, they make a deadly one-two punch. Coyotes and American badgers have been known to use team play to grief prairie dogs and ground squirrels. Basically, it goes oh, like yeah, this. I've seen this. In badgers can I think. flush out the prairie dogs by invading their burrow. And if the prairie dogs try to hightail it on land, then they'll get run down by the wily coyote. So even though coyotes and badgers are mortal enemies, their hunting success rate actually shoots up 30% when they set aside their differences. And I can't be 100% sure, but they almost look like friends here. But somehow Seriously. coyotes and badgers aren't even the weirdest Seriously, the <laughs> this is fucking so good. Look at this, it's like, oh, are you coming? Look at that, this is so run good. Run down by the wily coyote. So even though coyotes hey, and badgers come on, are come mortal here. enemies, their hunting come success rate coming? actually shoots up 30% when All they right. set aside their differences. <laughs> and I can't be 100% sure, but they almost look like friends here. Yeah. But somehow coyotes and... I mean, this always surprised me the first time I realized this with one of the Tear Zeus videos, like, animal team-ups. What? Like, you know, there's a crocodile who teams up with, uh, I don't know who who was that, but I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, they, they just, is it DNA or they really think this through? Like, okay, I'm going to make him my friend because it's beneficial, this and that. Uh, there's a spider and frog partnership, apparently. This is so ridiculous. Badgers aren't even the weirdest couple on this list. Wait a minute, spider and frog? Was it frog? I don't know. But something like that. This is your obligatory spider worm because I understand that it do be like that. Tarantulas have been known to adopt oh. tiny dotted humming frogs and let them crash in their burrow. This bite-sized kermit is about. actually perfectly safe because it eats the insects that could possibly destroy the spider's clutch of eggs. In return, the frog gets a rent-free apartment and an eight-legged bodyguard. So in a case of mutualism on steroids, the safest place in the jungle for a juicy humming frog is actually right under his arachnid roommate. And the tarantula will even use chemical cues to recognize their particular frog. It's an equal partnership where both parties have something to gain. But sometimes animals might help each other out even when they don't get anything in return. Orcas are the biggest bullies of the ocean and not seals, stingrays, sharks, or even other orcas are safe from the carnage this Oreo guppy can cause. But there is at least one animal that'll stand up to them. Humpback whales have been seen protecting animals like this seal from hunting orcas looking for takeout. In this case, a whale carefully balanced the Weddell seal on its chest after a pot of malicious equality symbols knocked it off an ice floe. And the humpback proceeded to keep the seal out of harm's way, even though it didn't seem to noticeably benefit the whale in any way. To date, Whoa. humpback whales have played guardian angels with seals, sunfish, and even baby gray whales. Humpbacks will often harass killer whales and confront them as a group in an act known as mobbing. And they'll turn up the intensity if there are any humpback calves nearby. And if there aren't any around, it's possible they satisfy this parental drive by defending any animal being targeted. I can't tell you for sure what it is, but it does mean humpbacks might be the only thing alive that can send a pot of orcas the other way. And this drive to protect others can extend to people. A marine biologist was terrified as a 50,000 pound humpback got dangerously close to her, nudging at her with its head and bumping her with its belly. And it wasn't until she scrambled onto the safety of the boat that she noticed a 15 foot tiger shark on the other side of the whale. There's a solid chance this was a pure coincidence and the whale only helped her out by accident. But given their track record for altruism, I would doubt it. Cetaceans are one of Oh my god, I have whole another view of humpback whales now. Holy shit, really? I mean, the whale basically helps up everyone, right? Help everyone. Humans doesn't matter. I mean, it could be a biological thing where their parental thing is just on for everybody or something like that. But still, that's just... This is fucking awesome. Orcas are like just bullying and humpback whale comes there. Yeah, I got you. This is, I mean, there is a... People always, you know, make this kind of Pixar Disney movies and just, just make shit up. Like certain animals behave in certain way and it's just cool and fun. But we know that's all bullshit. That's not how those animals react in real life. But there are certain animals 
whose behavior can be made into a movie. Like there could be a Disney or Pixar movie where humpback whale is like that, right? Honorable helps out everybody and they would be accurate. One of the top five smartest animals on the planet, so it's not hard to believe. Speaking of cetaceans, dolphins have a pretty good argument for being the smartest thing on earth that doesn't have thumbs. In fact, bottlenose dolphins are so intelligent that they start learning before they're born. And that's because mother dolphins will sing to their calves while they're still in the womb. That way, the unborn bottlenose learns its mother's signature whistle. The mother dolphin performs its signature whistle for the baby months before it's born and will continue doing it in the weeks after. But dolphins aren't the only animals that talk to their kids before they're alive. Alligator and crocodile hatchlings will call out to the mother while still in the eggs to let her know that they're ready to hatch. As soon as the mother gator hears this call, she'll immediately start digging her children out. But it's believed that baby gators are also coordinating their hatching time when they make that noise. In the experiment, scientists play the sound of these egg calls around an alligator and her eggs just to judge their reaction. Not only did the mother alligator immediately start digging up the speaker, the baby gator started calling back and even began hatching. So it's possible the alligator hatchlings call out to make sure all the siblings are on the same page and hatch together while also getting the mother's attention. The mother's attention is something octopus never get because they're born orphans. The mother usually dies as soon as they're born and the father gives up on life long before. Which means these babies are the size of a grain of rice yet have to figure out life in an ocean full of stranger danger. But since octopus are the smartest things in the ocean without a backbone, this can lead to what I like to call creative problem solving. This octopus manages to avoid the jaws of a deadly moray eel by riding it like a drunk sorority girl on a mechanical bar bull. Except I'm pretty sure the octopus lasted longer. This baby blanket octopus was seen piling a jellyfish using the tentacles in case they ever needed to go on the defensive. Perhaps the best example of cephalopod creativity is that some will carry two halves of a coconut to use as a travel sized panic room. At the first sign of danger, the octopus retreats back into its makeshift shell. When they're not doing that, they're carrying it around like they're late for a flight. Octopus are just one of those animals whose intelligence never fully gets appreciated, like ravens. Ravens and corvids in general are one of the two smartest kinds of birds. In fact, ravens are. I mean, <laughs> it's a sight, right? Yeah, the octopus running with a coconut. Oh shit! This is my shield. I need this. Damn. So smart that they've even started doing something that we figured out thousands of years ago. Ravens and wolves have developed a mutualistic relationship where ravens will call out to wolf packs and lead them to food. In exchange, the ravens eat whatever scraps the wolf pack leaves behind. But studies have shown that these ravens have actually started forming legitimate relationships with specific wolves in the pack, especially the pups. Ravens in Yellowstone were seen grabbing sticks to play tug of war with the curious wolf pups and would even grab at their tails just to get them to give chase. And because ravens can remember individuals for up to five years, these ravens have started forming emotional attachments to certain wolves. Which is why this is a Disney movie just waiting to happen. And you know how I said corvids are one of the two smartest things with wings? It's because parrots are in the same class of intelligence, and it's the African gray parrot that's considered the smartest. Which is probably why the seventh president of the United States, Andrew Jackson, owned one as a pet. So when President Jackson passed away in 1845, Paul the African gray attended his funeral. But he had to be escorted out because Paul the parrot started swearing so loudly it disturbed all the mourning attendants. The foul mouse already tired could still be heard even after he was ushered out the room and eventually had to be carried out the house. When you think of animals that can actually talk, your mind probably draws a blank after parrots. You definitely wouldn't guess the next animal on here. In 1971 in Maine, Scotty Dunning and George Swallow came across an orphan baby seal on the shore of a harbor and Swallow decided to take the little guy in. Because of its eating habits, he named the seal Hoover after the vacuum. After years of being raised by Swallow, Hoover would imitate his caretaker, repeating his favorite phrases with his thick accent to match. It's one of those things you would not believe if you never heard it. I want you to listen to this and keep in mind, this is a seal talking. As someone who spends a lot of time working around animals, zookeepers often end up learning way more than they need to know. Get out of here, really? Those were, I mean, if you hadn't said seal, I would like, oh, that's some guy is talking. Get over here, come here. That seal talking, god damn, this is so good. You, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people, you know, don't think of anybody else besides parrot when they think that's an animal that can talk, right? This is really good, man. But one of the more pleasant and safe work things that zookeepers have discovered is that one of the most irritable animals in Africa is actually a big pushover. The rhinoceros has a nasty and short temper, but it's only because they're legally blind in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the world. But anyone who's ever worked with captive rhinos quickly finds out that they have the personality of an armor-plated lapdog. They're playful, smart, have way more personality than you think, and they're incredibly affectionate. Cheetahs in captivity are slightly less affectionate. In fact, they can get so crippled by anxiety that they struggle to mate. The solution? Many cheetahs have gotten their own personal emotional support dog. 
Not only is it cute, the cheetahs use the more outgoing dogs as role models and will adjust their behaviors after them. These dogs, which are usually shepherds or labradors, are introduced to their cheetah counterparts at an early age in supervised playdates. If all goes well, the pair rarely leave each other's side. As the friendship helps redirect the cheetah's natural nervous energy, the at-risk cats are less stressed and therefore more likely to mate. The dogs win too, since many parks like the San Diego Zoo will use shelter dogs to pair with the wildcats. In fact, this is Hopper and he was actually rescued from a kill shelter. So it's a friendship that has the potential to- Yeah, see, every time somebody says, like, wild creatures are supposed to be stay in the wild, that's their natural, you know, habitat, this and that. But uh, whenever somebody takes out uh, some animal from their natural habitat like this, you know, pair it with a dog and this, they are more happier, right? I mean, look at how, you know, we took out wolves and dogs are, look at how they are right now, right? Look at all the cats and things. So every time somebody makes an argument, like, you shouldn't mess with, uh, you know, natural habitat. I mean, no, I mean, uh, humans' lives got better, right? I mean, we were cavemen, look at us now. Same thing can happen to animals. Obviously, they can't do that by, that by themselves. But if we, you know, create changes here and there, right? If we create some kind of a uh, habitable zone where people basically look out for things and, you know, like cheetah, like introduce dogs as friends, this and that. I mean, animals' lives could get better rather than just having, you know, eat or get eaten type of mentality all the time. But I know that's a way big if in the future. That's a way big of a thing to do which we can't do right now, definitely. Wild is much bigger, but the argument that, you know, wild has to be in that natural habitat, otherwise it doesn't work, no, that's, that's just bullshit. Save both animals. If that doesn't make you feel something, then this next story definitely will. This is La La the Penguin. After he was caught in a fishing net and left injured, a Japanese family rescued him and nursed the bird back to health. And La La was smart enough to realize he'd rather live in a rent-free air-conditioned apartment than have to fight for his life in the wild. One of Lala's favorite things to do was walk around the neighborhood and visit the local fish market. So his family gifted him with a backpack to carry his favorite snack of sardines and mackerel back home. Lala was so respected in this community that he never had to spend money for fish, he just paid for it with his presence. Lala lived with his foster family for 10 years until he passed away in 1996. And for the final fact of this video, this oh is Lord Anthony. Was oh, that was such a good story. Imagine that living there and just, you know, like a kid, a, a penguin just walks around with a backpack, always goes to one shop to eat food. <laughs> that is so good. He was a conservationist that dedicated his entire life to rescuing and rehabilitating wild animals. He was also known as the Elephant Whisperer after he was able to bring a group of escaped elephants back to their reserve and away from terrified locals who considered shooting them down. But in 2012, Lawrence Anthony unexpectedly died from a sudden heart attack. After his death, a group of wild elephants, the same ones he had helped rescue, arrived at his house and stayed for two days in what onlookers could only describe as a vigil. They traveled several hours to get there, and some of the elephants that showed up hadn't been at the house in nearly two years. After that, the elephants would make the trip to their fallen caretaker's house at the same time each year around March 2nd. How did they know that he's dead, though? How did they know? Second, the exact day Lawrence Anthony passed away. Elephants are highly emotional animals that will mourn the death of their own, especially if it was an important member of their herd, like a matriarch. So it only made sense that they'd pay their respects to the man that gave most of his life trying to protect theirs. And there you have it, 22 animal facts to start off your 2022. It probably doesn't look like it, but these videos take a lot of time to write, record, and edit. So for more consistent videos, make sure you follow my TikTok and Instagram, both are going to be in the description. Yeah, okay, this video was uplifting, holy shit, it's literally the one odd thing out out of the all videos the Casual Geographic made. Some of the videos our reactor has uplifting thing, but not the whole video. This whole video was a kind of uplifting. You should do more like this, right? So yeah, I was, I was skeptical, but yeah, no, apparently this was uplifting. Right, well, that was, if you haven't smiled yet today, by the channel Casual Geographic. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, so I know which type of videos to react tomorrow. Comment down if you want to react to any specific video from a specific channel, and yeah, I'll see you next time.